The coast of the Levant hides secrets that go back to the dawn of mankind. Most of our distant ancestors traveled through the coastal plain at the foot of the Carmel Range as our species, Homo sapiens, gradually took to the four corners of the world. This natural pathway between Africa and Asia than Europe has seen more cultures, more varied living conditions, and more upheavals than any other region in the world. Here, to travel back in time, one only has to dig. Successive generations of humans have left traces of their passage, from crude flint axes to objects more elaborate and more precious. Yet the real treasures of the region aren't to be found underground, but underwater. We are 10 kilometers south of Haifa, Israel, lying offshore the little town of Atlit. The research vessel Medex is about to drop anchor at the foot of an impregnable fortress built by the Knights Templars, itself erected on the foundations of a more ancient Phoenician harbor. The mystery of Atlit starts with the discovery of an unusual mound of stone, half a kilometer from the shore, under 10 meters of water. The discoverer, Dr. Ehud Galili, is an archaeologist and an accomplished diver. His uncanny sixth sense has always helped him to discern revealing signs of a find in the strange universe of marine landscapes. But Dr. Galili doesn't yet suspect that he is about to make the discovery of his lifetime. First of all, there was the invention of the aqualung. Then I was born. <laughs> For me, these are two important events. Uh, first, I started as a snorkel diver. I started to, I joined my father in the Association for, for Underwater Archaeology. It was founded in 61. And very soon I realized that I wanted to explore the sea. I wanted to dive and to find things that nobody had ever found before. There are very, very rare places on land where no, you can go and you know that you are the first one. In the sea, anywhere you go, you are the first to be there. First of all, as a boy who was looking for coins and artifacts, or the passion of collection and fighting, and then as a researcher who wanted to know the background and the story beyond these artifacts. Not only to put these nice artifacts on the television and watch them, but tell you where did they came from, how they were done, who were the mariners? Uh, who were the fishermen? What technologies they used? All these uh, questions we can answer by studying these finds that we found from the sea. Scores of relics have been retrieved by Dr. Galili or his colleagues. Anchors from all eras, chariot wheels, ingots, cannonballs. But they came mostly from the endless chain of wreckages that plagued the sailors over the centuries. On this coast, the lack of natural harbors makes the winter westerly winds ruthless. After every storm, new areas are exposed and new treasures are found. The main idea is to wait for the sea to do the job of excavating. The day of the discovery, one of those big storms had partly exposed the strange rocky formation from the sand. Our scientific treasure hunter knew immediately that this was no wreck. Who could have had the motivation and means to go and build something there, so deep under the sea? Phoenicians? Romans? Templars? Arabs? This question intrigued Dr. Galili. A few years earlier, in the same area, 
he had helped retrieve the ram of a war galley, a half-ton bronze behemoth. The Phoenicians had an important trading post in Atlit, using the islet close to the peninsula so their boats could land with sufficient draft. This is the coastline. These merchants were foresighted mariners and savvy builders, but none of their structures had been found so far from the shore. The means and determination of Templars could more easily account for such a feat, but to what end? During the Crusades, Chateau Pellerin was an imposing fortress with many lines of defense. This castle was so well protected that it was never taken. When the knights deserted the Levant, it is said that weeks went by before the Muslims realized that the place was empty. The first dig by Galili and his team reveals quite a different story, a different prehistory, shall we say. The site predates the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, or even the Pottery Age. This is Stone Age, way beyond 6,000 years. First of all, we came to a tomorrow's or a tower of about 80 centimeters high, built of undressed stones, without cement, of course. Uh, lined one near the other in circles. And then when we removed it and started to excavate, we came upon a, a well which is constructed from very sophisticated way. And the same as uh, wells are uh, built today. Stone Age is a general term that encompasses millions of years of evolution from cavemen to civilization. The end of this long prehistory is marked by a deep revolution, the Neolithic, the New Stone Age. Under 12 meters of salt water, Dr. Galili's discovery appears to be the most ancient submerged Neolithic site ever found. Dr. Israel Hershkovitz, a medical doctor specializing in prehistoric pathology, was convinced that the stone mound would turn out to be a burial place. He was wrong about the mound, but his hopes wouldn't be dashed for long. The best moment in Atletium was when we excavated the first human skeleton was an outstanding experience. I mean that we knew that there is probably there is a burial pit over there and we start moving the clay slowly, slowly. We expose the skull and then we expose the rest of the skeleton. But interestingly, once we expose the full skull, the skull had a, a huge hole, you know, at the center, probably a, a post-mortem damage to the skull and a fish came out of it, you know, out of the skull. It's a very fishing idea. If you take a modern skull, the people of Atletia would look similar to present-day Levantine population. They will look more or less the same as you and I. 